Hello and welcome to this video which is about refractive index. This is a corrective video uh, based on feedback from you guys. As always, if there's any mistakes that you notice or anything you think I could do to improve my videos, please let me know. It's always really appreciated and really welcomed. So we've been talking about reflection and refraction quite a lot and I've been talking about it in relation to ultrasound and in relation to light. All you need to remember and you need to understand is that both of these are just waves and it's waves that can undergo reflection and refraction. So waves get refracted when they go from um, a medium of one density to a medium of another density and what happens is they actually change the speed. So as they're going in here they are being refracted towards the normal and here they're being refracted away from the normal. You'll notice that this line and this line are supposed to be, um, but my drawing's not very good, um, of the same orientation. And that against the normal here, we have our angle of incidence and our angle of refraction. Our angle of refraction and our angle of incidence always measured against the normal. If the light enters or changes medium at 90 degrees, you are just going to have the uh, wave going straight through and it's not going to be refracted. So when we're looking at these questions, um, each um, medium is going to have its own refractive index and that is dependent on the medium. It is uh, compared to a vacuum um, in comparison to the um, medium that we're looking at. This is because in a vacuum there are no particles to interfere with the light ray. Um, whereas in um, a dense medium such as plastic, water or perspex you have lots of particles which are going to cha um, change density and are going to change the speed of the wave that's going through it which is going to cause it to be refracted. Now the hard bit, this is where the maths comes in. This is what makes it a lot harder than the reflection and refraction that you did in P1. So this is our example here and um, what you need to remember that our angle of incidence is this one here and our angle of refraction is this one here and these are always measured against the normal. Here we have angle of refraction and this is our angle of incidence. The equation that you need to remember, which will be on your data sheet, is the sine of I over the sine of R. So that is the sine of the angle of incidence over the sine of the angle of refraction. You're going to need a scientific calculator for this, but if you haven't got one for you in the exam, don't worry, you can probably still get a few of the marks if you write down the equation and then put the right number in for I and the right number in for R. So this is an example I drew earlier. I have my angle of incidence here against the normal, my angle of reflection here. And my angle of incidence is 42 degrees and my angle of reflection is 28 degrees. I just move that over there. So sine of 42 divided by sine of 28, these are the degrees. If we get our scientific calculators out, you'll see the answer is 1.4. Now the maths on this looks scary, but if you understand how to use your scientific calculator properly, it really isn't. You have to remember that it is all that the angles are measured against the normal.